Welcome to Playing With Science, brought to you by Startalk and Stitcher. Yeah. I'm Chuck Nice. I am Gary O'Reilly. And this is a show where we actually meld together science and those who love science and sports and those who love sports. And what could be better? It's like, you got sports in my science. You got science in my sport. Mmm, it's like a Reese's cup of deliciousness with sports and science. If you love science, we've got that. If you love sports, we have that. We have Neil deGrasse Tyson, who actually interviews some of the most notable players in sports, like uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Lance and Armstrong. Lance Armstrong, Hope Solo. Ryan Je- Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick, yeah. just to name a few. And in addition to that, uh, we talk to the people behind the technology of sports, CEOs of companies that make the games that you love so much more interesting to watch. And we also have scientists like Chuck Liu come on and break down the physics of the actual sports plays themselves. So, in other words, where geeks and jocks collide. Absolutely. What could be better? What could be better? I wonder yeah. who wins in that exchange. Only one way to find out. Just remember, when you play with fire, you get burned. When you play with science, you get learned. Take a listen to this clip from Playing With Science, where Gary and I talk about the Immaculate Reception. Today, we are talking about the most famous play in the history of American football. So a true. Play, isn't it? A play that still divides the opinions of sports fans almost half a century later. A play that is shrouded in more mysteries and conspiracy theories than a presidential election. Yet... <laughs> we can solve and explain those mysteries by using science. Oh, yes, we can. The Immaculate Reception was a moment of desperation in the final seconds of a postseason game that became the turning point in one NFL franchise's history whilst turning the other into a battle against the rest of the world that is still going on. So let's get some numbers straight, shall we? Seven and six, the score. Raiders up by one point. It is the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. It's a fourth and down. There are 26 seconds left. There are men on the sidelines built like (laughs) mountains who are too scared to watch. This is the point of adrenaline. This is the point of fear. It's the moment you live for. It is an AFC playoff game. And then it all happens. With that in mind, when you said, when you said, uh, Everything had to be in the right place at the right time for for this play to even happen. Yeah. Uh, that brings us to a clip where, you know, our own Neil deGrasse Tyson actually sat down with the quarterback of the uh, New York Jets, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and, uh, you know, asked him about this particular play. Uh, I think we have that clip. We've been trying to poll quarterbacks on their knowledge or memory of or reaction to the famous Immaculate Reception. Uh-huh. Um, do, you, uh, do you guys talk, do you go in a back room and talk about that? Is it, was it just a bit of inspiration? How does it land on you and your, and your soul as an athlete? Um, I thought, I mean, it's an amazing play. And I wish that I could get some of that luck, you know, because that, uh, you know, it was a Terry Bradshaw. Yeah, Terry Bradshaw to Franco, um, Harris. Franco Harris, yeah. Off of somebody's shoulder, or off the big head, and then he catches it basically on the ground and outruns four people. And it, I mean, there's so many amazing things that had to happen exactly right for that play to work. Um, so so you, it, you candidly it, recognize the role of luck in that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if it was much of anything else. Yes. <laughs> Hence, immaculate reception yeah. rather than skillful reception. <laughs> Yes, exactly. (laughs) Well, I think that's great. We've got a current NFL player with enough about him to respect the history, even though he kind of sits on, you know what, really lucky. So, and speaking of luck, this is something I'd just like to ask every scientist. Do you believe in luck? No. (laughs) (laughs) I have yet to meet a scientist who says, I believe in luck. Why not, man? Tell me. I mean, I I know why most scientists answer this question, but I want to hear yours. Because I just find it fascinating that I've yet to meet a scientist when you say, do you believe in luck? I have not met one scientist who said, of course. Who doesn't? I mean, we're we're governed by the laws of the universe. We're constrained by the laws of physics. And, uh, I mean, luck is simply what 
the, the word we use for a low probability occurrence. I mean, if you win the lottery, you say you got lucky. Well, uh, that's the word you're referring to hitting a one in a 50 million shot or, or whatever the probability is. Okay. Uh, so, somebody's going to hit it uh, if, if you play all the numbers. Uh, so, I, you know, it's not a, it's just luck is just the word that we're using in the, in the layman's sense to describe things that are very low probability in occurrence. Awesome. I like it. All right. So uh, no such thing as luck, but there is such a thing as a break. We are going to take a first one. Um, right. Two questions. Firstly, who was the head coach of the Raiders on the day of the Immaculate Reception? And mm -hmm. secondly, how many Super Bowls did the Pittsburgh Steelers win on the back of the Immaculate Reception during, mm -hmm. only during the decade of the 70s. Mm -hmm. Right, we are going to leave you a moment to think about that. When and we good luck thinking about that. Yeah, no, no such thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> when we come back, we will have a rather special guest by the name of Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, and we will be discussing some more science. We'll, of course, have Professor Eric Goff and Jim Brennan, who's with us in the studio. So, do not go away. So, what do you think? Everybody here at Star Talk is pretty excited, and we can't wait for you to listen in. You can find Playing With Science wherever you listen to podcasts on Stitcher Radio, iTunes Podcast, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, and TuneIn. New shows premiere every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Subscribe now, and don't miss a single science-filled episode. Oh. We just knocked this one out the park, baby. <laughs>